Welcome to Hopkins High School for Lake Conference Baseball on CCX Sports, a late regular season matchup between undefeated and ranked number one Wyzetta and a young Hopkins team that's coming around, but they are at five and ten. I'm Jay Wilcox along with Drew Keough and an interesting uh, opportunity here, Drew, is uh, Hopkins hoping to play spoiler a little bit. Obviously, it's been a really good season for Wyzetta. You don't see too many teams that are still undefeated in mid-May like this, and uh, they've you know, just had a solid all-around season. Yeah, it's very rare to see a team go 15-0 this late in the season. It's pretty impressive. It's actually very impressive for Wyzetta, knowing that you you know, you know got to pitch four, five pitchers, and when you get busy weeks, sometimes you have to go deep in that pitching rotation, and then you get consistent hitting, which I think uh, Wyzetta has been very impressed with their team batting average and having some key hits throughout the, the early part of the season. See the lefty Elijah Stewart warming up there for Hopkins. You look at the lineup that Bobby DeWitt will send up. Matthew Berkland, the shortstop leading it off. Tyler Gullix in the third, then Gard Swenson, the right fielder. Brady Lash at first, Michael Ream, the catcher. Adam Desilich in left, Elias Leach, DH, James Hansen, the second baseman, and Kieran Leatherman, the center fielder, hitting in the nine slot for Wyzetta. And defensively for Hopkins, they've got Frank Mauser at third base, Dylan Lindstrom at short, Max Lerner at second, young but talented up the middle for the Royals, Wyatt Peterson at first base, Noah Goldman, Ethan Sawatsky, and Lincoln Heath in the outfield, Jake Nordine doing the catching and as we said lefty Elijah Stewart getting the start the Royals have said they've kind of gone with the uh, openers as pitchers a fair amount this year they they generally haven't had guys work deep in the games kind of by design they've had some relievers that they like to rely on later in the game so Stewart has only pitched one inning so far this year he has one save and he Hasn't allowed a hit or a walk, one strikeout, but uh, kind of thrown into the fire here against this really strong Wyzetta team as Berkland steps in to lead it off. Yeah, I think what you want to do is you want to throw them out there and see how they feel. If they get a good feel of the ball and they're throwing strikes, you ride that, ride that wave. But when you're going up against a, a monster like Wyzetta that has had a great start to the season, the powerful lineup, um, you're not sure what you're going to get into, so it doesn't really matter who you throw out there. You kind of want to throw somebody out there that's not really thinking too much about it and uh, feels comfortable throwing strikes, and if they get in a groove, you, you kind of ride that wave. Berkland hitting at 339 this year, and really their whole regular lineup hitting over 300, which uh, Coach DeWitt said, yeah, we just, even on our better teams, we have just not had that kind of consistency throughout the lineup, and there's a... Walk taken by Berkland to begin the top of the first. And so Tyler Gullickson will step up. Gullickson hitting 395 this year. There you get a look at uh, where we sit right now. It's certainly a possibility that we might see some rain before this one is completed as uh, the team's uh, the good news is we're playing on artificial turf, so they can certainly keep playing on this field more so maybe than some of the high school fields. But And a quick discussion already with uh, Elijah Stewart after a first pitch walk given up. support here for the Wyzetta group. Stewart, the side armor, a little bit high with that one. Been unable to find the zone so far. There's a strike. There you go. He, he hasn't been completely wild. He's just kind of missed the zone. He's, once he finds that zone, he'll, he'll get a little more comfortable out there. Yeah. 
Missing away there, so patient at bats here early for Wyzetta. They've been swinging the bats well, as we said, all season long. And Coach DeWitt said, he, you know, they've really been preaching we want hard line drives rather than trying to launch the ball out. There's a base hit. Gullickson bouncing one through the right side and into right field. So runners at first and second for the Trojans here in the top of the first as Gullickson delivers their first base hit after the opening walk. And now it will be guard Swenson stepping up. He's hitting at 340 with a 460 slugging percentage. Four doubles and a triple among his hits. A little bit inside with that one. Just missed that breaking ball. He hasn't been able to throw the, the fastball with accuracy, so he went on with the breaking ball to start this batter off. But is that a really good spot to put a big number up here in this first inning? And you can see the two, I mean, they're not, you don't feel sorry for a team that's 5-10 and 10 against a 15-0 and 0 team and just start calling strikes that aren't quite strikes either. I mean, he's going to make them earn strikes, you can see already. Yeah, these are both very good programs. Traditionally, they've been both very strong. Um, conference game, you don't just give strikes away. you got to make sure they throw strikes and give the batter a chance to hit the ball. That one missing low and away. Hopkins getting an opportunity to play tomorrow at Target Field against Rogers. So uh, they got a busy end of the week playing Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And got Swenson to chase another one. Yeah, what a great event that is for Hopkins to take on Rogers down to Target Field after the Yankees Twins game. Getaway day for the, the big boys and get these high schoolers down there to play in the big field and maybe cross some paths with some um, MLBers and maybe get some autographs for a fun time. And this one hit well, but should be playable out in center. Catch made, bluff tag there. As Sawatsky got himself under that one with no trouble. One gone here in the first, and Brady Lash will be the batter for Wyzetta. See, good, good solid contact that time. He got a piece of that pitch, just didn't hit it hard enough, and easy can of corn there for the center fielder. Hopkins had that one played well, too. I have to admit, off the bat, I'm thinking, you know, this might be a bit of a run, but then you realize that they had him played pretty much where he needed to be in the outfield. And this one fouled down the right field line here by Lash. Brady hitting at 4.08, getting on base over half the times, 5.17 on base. Seven doubles among his hits as well. Jumped on that one, but foul. Interesting, too, in the 2 3 4 spots, they've got left hand hitters. Uh, today, facing a left hand starter, but obviously, against a lot of teams, that'll be a good thing to be having some good left hand bats near the top of your order as well. Good take there, turn that shoulder in. It's a little bit further in, he takes a hit by pitch there with two strikes, but he wants to be uh, hitting the ball here. You could tell he was almost kind of wanting to lean into that one, but then decided he better not. Low and away. Yeah, it's hard to teach that, but uh, as the kids get older, um, even just last night in the Little League game, I had a kid open up and he, he tried to catch the ball with his hand. I'm like, you're gonna break your hand doing that. You gotta turn that shoulder and wear that and get down to first base if it's gonna hit you, otherwise just take it as a ball. Runners going, pitches high and inside, and they will advance. Couldn't have picked a better one to run on, as it turned out, because that one actually ended up behind Lash. Yeah, and that uh, opens things up here with a 3-2 count, uh, drop third strike. They got to throw it on the first base. That runner from third can possibly score. Um, puts a little more pressure here on Hopkins. And it also means the ground ball should definitely score a run. They're playing very deep in yeah. this first inning, as you would expect. You're certainly not that you're more eager to get an out than to try desperately to keep a run from scoring here. Yeah, middle infield's way back. Um, third base is a little behind baseline depth. Lash fouling this one out of play. There's a lot of room in foul ground here. Obviously that one wasn't playable, but it's something that 
first and third baseman I think really like when you've got an opportunity to make some plays that probably on a fair number of high school fields wouldn't be playable. And another foul out of play here by Lash. Stewart trying to battle back. He issued a walk and then a single and got uh, Swenson on a fly ball to center and now Dueling it out here with uh, Brady Lash, the number four hitter for the Trojans. Still three, two count, one out. Yeah, things didn't look good after that leadoff walk, but he's really kind of settled down and started to throw strikes and getting ahead in the count here and has a chance to really limit the damage here in this inning. Oh, lost him up high though, so they'll be loaded up as Lash fouling away a few pitches that he didn't like and uh, now the base is full and Jason Michalakis out and we're already gonna have a change on the mound for Hopkins. He did say that Stewart probably wasn't gonna pitch you know, deep into this game regardless, one way or the other, but the bases get loaded with one out and he's going to go to the bullpen here as coming in for the Royals to pitch. Let's see if we can didn't pick up the number on the way in there, but They'll make this pitching change, and so. Yeah, it looks like Harrison Rosenberg coming in. We'll take a timeout, come back here as the Trojans trying to break things open in the bo uh, top of the first. We're 0-0 as a pitching change already for Hopkins. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. And welcome back, Harrison Rosenberg, the senior coming in to pitch for Hopkins. He's worked seven innings so far this year, allowing seven hits, two walks, six strikeouts, and an ERA of two. He's pitching in his sixth game. He's made one start. So this one, not a start, but he is coming on in the first inning. And the base is loaded up for Michael Ream for Wyzetta. Ream. Hitting at 419 this year. Uh -oh. And drives this one deep to left field, and it is a grand slam for Ream. First pitch he sees from Rosenberg, he deposits over the left field fence. We are seeing an early example of why this team's 15 and 0, Drew. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, jumping on that first pitch, knowing that coach probably told him to go out there and throw some strikes. We had a, had some balls and a hit to right field, but um, knowing you got a big hitter at the plate, you can't just groove one down the center of the plate. And exactly what he did, and this this ball, there's no question off the bat. Big kid, big swing, crushed over to left field. So a quick four nothing lead. Adam Deslich stepping up now for Wyzetta. He's having an okay year too, hitting a mere 476 for the Trojans. And lifts this one out to short right center, long run for it, and it's gonna drop in for a hit. Desilich finding some open ground there. Uh, not a bad read on it, I don't think, by Sawatsky, but he just had too far to go. Yeah, that fell right in the right spot. Off the end of the bat, 
He didn't think he really hit it that hard. He didn't. He just hit it in the right spot and comes down as a single. Nice job of the center fielder to go after that ball. Nice job of the right fielder to kind of circle in and back that up because the center, center fielder has got to go after that knowing that his right fielder is going to back it up and he won't have an easy chance to get a double there. Elias Leach is the batter now for Wyzetta, and he takes a strike. He's hitting 385 this year. Runner is going, throw down, bounces through, and Deslich is going to hang on at second with a stolen base. That might have been a close play yeah. if that throw was on right on. I think a good throw might get him, but. Yeah, it didn't appear to be a great jump. It was okay, but. And when Deathless gets back to the dugout, he'll, he'll tell his buddies, ah, I had it all over there. <laughs> Good take there by Leach. He's dropped there by the catcher, too, to just get down on your knees and block that ball. If it scoots up and hits you in the chest protector, it's just fine. Just keep it in front of you. That runner's not going to advance as long as you keep that ball in front of you. We'll tap her off his foot there. Rosenberg trying to bounce back from giving up that grand slam on the first pitch he threw after the starter, Stewart, had loaded the bases. This one popped up. Playable on the left side and catch made there by Mauser. So two outs here in the top of the first and James Hansen will be the hitter for Wyzetta. Hansen hitting at 429. Hasn't had as many at bats as uh, it's a lot of their starting lineup, but has done the job since coming in. Lifting this one out to left field, and it's going to hang up and be playable and caught there by Goldman. So the Trojans are done in the first, but it's a good inning as that grand slam by Ream puts them on the board. Four runs for the Trojans in the top half of the first. Hopkins will try and answer as they get their first opportunity with the bats. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the interesting part about baseball is it's you still got seven full innings yourself. You, you know, it isn't like, oh, we're so far behind already or we're, we're out or anything like that. Yeah, you got to go up there and attack. You got to expect strikes, be ready to swing and put the ball in play. And you got to score runs here, and especially going down four zip in the first inning. You got to know you got to get runners on base, move them around, take it one run at a time. You're not going to jump out and, and, you know, you got that. Got to get that first or second runner on base and chip away. Noah Filer loosening up for the Trojans. The Wyzetta defense, Gullickson, Berkland, Hansen, and Lash around the infield. Deslich, Leatherman, Swenson in the outfield. Ream will hit that home run as the catcher. And then Noah Filer loosening up, as we said, uh, got a 4-0 record in 21 innings, also one save. So uh, they knew they were going to have pretty deep and good staff this year and it's definitely turned out that way he is walked four and fan 35 that that that's a ratio that'll uh, work for you i think <laughs> how many how many innings pitch <laughs> 21 wow that's impressive yeah so he is uh, certainly done a good job there's a look at the royals lineup as they will send lincoln heath then uh, dylan lundstrom white peterson ethan sawatsky frank mauser lerner if Stewart can still bat, they listed him as the DH, and I suspect he will be, and then Nordin and Goldman. So here is Heath stepping in to lead things off for the Royals. First pitch is over for a strike. Heath hitting 417 this year. 533 on base. 
percentage. Got a little movement to his ball. It's a fastball there. He throws pretty hard, but it kind of tails off and breaks away from a left handed hitter. When you come out there with a 4 0 lead in the bottom of the first, you just want to hammer that strike zone. Keep throwing strikes. If they hit it hard, they hit it hard. Filer, an ERA of one in those 21 innings, so. Fair to say he's been uh, quite effective for them this year and certainly not the only one on this strong staff. Riley Leatherman, whose brother is in the lineup today along with Lash and Filer have been their three guys that have thrown over 20 innings as Heath will be aboard to start the bottom of the first. Dylan Lundstrom will step up. 250 average for him, does have nine runs batted in, four doubles among his hits. Fouling that one away. I'm going to turn the lights on pretty soon here. It's getting kind of dark. It's no, no storm out there in the west, but it's definitely cloud cover, and it's not going away. Missing up high with that fastball. 0-2 count. That's a, that's a good miss. See if he chases that. And breaking ball, fooled him with that one. Strikeout recorded as Lindstrom, I don't think, was expecting that, and it kind of froze him. And that was the first breaking ball we saw. A nice 12 to 6 break on that, and batter knew right away that was a strike, and kind of just tip your cap and you move on. Wyatt Peterson stepping in now for the Royals. Wyatt. Hitting at 150, does have five runs batted in. Obviously having him in the three hole, they, they think he's a quality hitter, even though the average doesn't look like it right now. But that can change a lot in high school season. You're not getting a huge number of at bats and sometimes it can look skewed one way or the other. Yeah, and sometimes you want to give kids a chance, build their confidence. This is a very young program here at Hopkins and they want to give kids a chance to grow and see leaders kind of take an opportunity and, and kind of see how they react. Foul that one away. Late on that fastball. Yeah, he's got pretty good velocity on that fastball. He's really got good control of it. Good start to the game for him. Peterson fights that one off to stay in there at two and two. Wyzetta's well, already pretty much wrapped up the late conference title. I guess mathematically they could be tied still, but very unlikely. Runner is going. Here's the throw down, and not quite in time as Heath will swipe second. Reem came up throwing and thought there was a chance. It's close play, but he definitely is in. You know, up in good position there to see that play, and I think he just had a good jump, and sometimes you just can't get the runner out. Swing and a miss. Peterson down on strikes for out number two. And Ethan Sawatsky will step up now for Hopkins. Sitting 250 this year. Scored seven runs, driven in a couple. One double to his credit.
Feeling our first raindrop oh, or two here, I unfortunately. <laughs> Nothing much yet, but. High chopper, oh, and that one is gonna be a tough play. They won't be able to get an out. Infield hit there for Sawatsky. So it was charged there at third, but it just took an in-between bounds, Gullickson. And then I think a smart play, obviously, by Berkland not to try and throw that ball. It was gonna be too late to do anything with it anyway. Yeah, I think to, to get that out at first, he's gotta field that on that short hop, otherwise he has no chance. If he stays back and tries to catch it on the next hop, Runner is going to be safe at first. Um, concede that, just keep that runner at third, don't let him score. You mentioned backing up well in the outfield. Same thing there on that infield. Mm -hmm. If that ball gets by third and nobody else is there, then it's going to make a little slow roll into the outfield and score that run. And a hard liner by Mauser, but right at the second baseman. So Hopkins, unfortunate there, nothing to show for that well hit ball. Royals done in the first, no runs, one hit, and a couple left on. It's four nothing YZ after one. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Welcome back here as we get set for the top half of the second. YZ leading Hopkins 4-0. There's a look at Harrison Rosenberg who came on in relief in the first for Hopkins. He gave up a grand slam on the first pitch he threw but then got out of further trouble. So the 9-1-2 hitters coming up for YZ. Kieran Leatherman stepping in. They batted eight in that first inning. Leatherman hitting at 3.03 is the young, younger brother of their outstanding pitcher, Riley. Besides being you know, good, strong hitters, it seems like YZ guys have been patient enough to swing at strikes or pitches they can handle too. Yeah, that goes a long way. Um, it forces the pitcher to kind of really focus in and throw good pitches. Um, if you're chasing balls and you swing at it, they can get away with getting cheap strikes. And that's what, you know, kids, uh, as you move up in age and everything, you realize too that you might be able to put a ball in play that's a foot off the plate, but your probably your odds of hitting it hard are a lot less. And there's a called third strike. Leatherman, I think, thought he was headed to first. Instead, he's rung up. One gone here, and now Matthew Berkland will hit. Yeah, I think that, that pitch, I think he kind of knew he took a really good pitch. He's just trying to sell the umpire there. He, you know, a 3-2 count, a little on the outside corner, but close enough to get that third strike. Berkland drew a walk in the first inning facing Stewart. Now Rosenberg, the righty in there. Yeah. 
That one's over for a strike. You know, going back to your plate discipline um, mention, it's there's an interesting story about Joe Maurer. If you listen to him talk, he almost always took a first pitch just because he'd, he'd really like to work that count. He would try and read the pitcher. You know, you, you have spray, you have like pitch charts and all this stuff. You have tendencies. But what he would do is he would know if he got down 0-1 on an account, he's down, but he's still going to protect the plate. But if he went up 1-0 on an account, he was at a huge advantage, and he'd have an opportunity to drive um, balls to the gap. Berkland will draw a walk. Second time in a row, there's Bobby DeWitt, the Trojans coach, and asked him before the game, you know, did you expect to be 15-0? and 0? And he said, oh, gosh, no, you can never expect that at a, you know, high school baseball. But he did say, we've done a lot of things well. We, we, we figured we'd pitch well, but we've hit probably a little better than even we thought. Yeah, it's really impressive, especially at a big conference in the city. Um, you know, you're not playing a week schedule. You're playing – your conference schedule is impressive. Your out-of-conference schedule is probably pretty impressive too. So it's – being 15-0 takes, you know, some luck, but also it's it's a battle of, like, figuring out your lineup, understanding key players and coming in key, key situations and making sure when it's a close game, who can you rely on? Because that's what makes a difference when you get into the playoffs. Galuxin, who bounced a single through between first and second, his first time up. Takes that one low and in. Yeah, and they've got good depth in their program and all that, but it still takes uh, quite an effort to, to continue on and have this kind of record still here toward the end of the season like this. This one is hit well out to right field. But caught. Mm -hmm, caught, drifting over there by is Lincoln Heath. And two outs in the inning now, and Swenson will be the batter for the Trojans. Got under that one a little more than he'd like. Hit it well, but not crushed. Yeah, these bats, if you don't hit it in the sweet spot, it doesn't really go that far. If, you, if he hits that ball in the sweet spot, it goes much further, but it seemed like it jumped off the bat, but um, fortunately for Hopkins, it stayed in the park. Bluff there by Berkland. Hopkins was convinced he was going. He went about a third of the way there, but taken for a ball. Swenson flied to center field his first time up. That's good base running. It opens up gaps, opens up the right side, kind of pulls the shortstop closer to second base. And Rosenberg going to throw over there. Gets the pitcher out of a rhythm, too. And lifted to left center field and playable out there in left as Goldman gets over and a much better second inning for Hopkins. Wyzetta, no runs, no hits. They leave one and we go to the bottom of two. It's 4 nothing Trojans. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Welcome back here to Hopkins High School as the Royals trail wise at a 4 0 as we go to the bottom half of the second. A little bit of light rain starting to fall here as Filer 
continues his warm-ups. And first pitch over for a strike. Max Lerner leading it off here for Hopkins. Elijah Stewart will follow him and then Jake Nordine. Slice foul down the first base side. Lerner hitting at 220. He's also walked six times. Does have 10 steals if he gets on. Breaking ball lifted to right, and catch is made. Good communication there for a moment, and you're looking and thinking eh, it might be a collision here, but guard Swenson able to call off his second baseman. He kind of had to slide to a knee to make that catch, but stayed with it. And one out here in the bottom of the second. Yeah, not the best read there. He kind of took a step back, but uh, with two strikes, Lerner put the ball in play there, and. Came in and made a nice diving catch there, sliding catch. Elijah Stewart, that's a kind of an underrated thing, yeah, but you know, outfield defense, when you get to the higher levels, you know, you start talking section play, state play, that can be an important thing too. I mean, obviously your first thing you're thinking of is how good is their shortstop or their, their uh, you know, third baseman catcher, that kind of thing, but Stewart took a mighty cut at that one. Yeah, definitely. As kids get older, uh, we were just talking about this actually in a Little League tournament over the weekend. Um, in Little League, you typically put your best players at third, short, first, catcher, pitcher, right? Because the kids can't hit the ball out of the infield. But as kids get older and the ball can pop off that bat, not only is it important to be able to catch the ball, but you've got to be able to throw the ball in and be able to understand when you need to back up your teammate to your left or your to your right. Nice breaking ball there by Filer as Jake Nordine, the Hopkins catcher, steps in. Jake's got a couple of homers this year. His overall average isn't too good at 125, but that will be ruled a strike. So 0-2. Driven in six runs, scored four. Ooh, just missed with that one. He put that exactly where he wanted it and where Ream asked for it, but just outside. And that one up high as Nordine lays off it. And a rip and a miss. Four strikeouts through two for Filer. No runs, no hits, no one left for the Royals. After two, it's 4 nothing. Why is that up? CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Eddie Winters will be the new pitcher for Hopkins here to begin inning number three. He has worked 10 and two thirds innings. Uh, this will be his seventh appearance. He's made four starts, allowed 11 hits with five walks and nine strikeouts, an ERA of 2.62 and a 0-0 and zero and zero record, so Hopkins as uh, Coach Mikolakos was telling me, that, you know, this is kind of the way they've done things throughout the year. Obviously, they got off to a little bit of rough start, you know, pitching in the first inning, but they have generally 
use quite a few guys within a game, and that's been kind of by design and kind of by necessity, a little bit of mixture of both. Yeah, it takes time to, to build up pitchers, and I think that's what you're seeing him trying to do here is he has a really young program, and as they develop and get older, he's going to see which ones can kind of stay in the game and consistently throw strikes. But as we've seen throughout this early part of the game, Hopkins has brought in a few pitchers, and mostly about an inning, inning and a half, maybe two innings on average throughout this early part of the season for them. Brady Lash stepping in to lead off the third. He drew a walk and scored ahead of Reams' home run there at uh, first inning. Fouled away there by Lash. Reem, who has the big blow of the game so far, a first pitch grand slam in that first inning for Wyzetta. He'll hit next. Outside with that one. Jumped on that one, but a little early, and it's fouled on the right field side. See how close he's getting up on the plate there with a 3-1 count, making, making sure that pitcher has to bring a strike, and he's going to try and drive it and pull it down the line. See if he changes his positioning there in the box with a 3-2 count. Some kids just have a knack. Yeah, they like to stay right on that inside line. Um, if they step out and get a, they're able to pull that ball, they hit it hard down the line. Lifting this one out to short left, and it'll be the shortstop actually drifting back. Lindstrom to make that play. There's a look at <laughs> Reem, what he did last time. Pretty good bat flip. I'd say that's a pretty impressive bat flip there. He was pumped up right away, knew he got a hold of it. And you can kind of feel that. When you hit a ball, you really don't feel it, actually. And when you don't feel it, you know you really squared it up. And if you get it up in the air, it's going to go. And like you mentioned, Drew, uh, being honest, doing games at ground level at a high school, sometimes it's not that easy to tell immediately if it's going to get out. Well, that one was not the case there. We knew, too. Yeah, when these bigger kids have a good swing and they square that ball up, it just goes. Off speed there is over for a strike. To Hopkins credit, they've you know rebounded from that. It isn't uh, you kind of had the feeling after the first handful of batters that Wyzetta was gonna make quick work of this one. And since then that hasn't been nearly as easy going for them. Definitely started off with a walk and a single and ended up with the bases loaded and he hits a grand grand slam, but they haven't really done much since then. Reem drills that one into center. Winter's going with kind of a delayed delivery there, but Reem's timing was just fine on that one as he drives it up the middle for a hit. Going to have a courtesy runner come for him. Yeah, good piece of, of hitting there. He, he, he was anticipating a, a pitch a little sooner, and he kind of got a little bit off weight, but he still squared the ball up and hit it hard enough to get up right up the middle of the box and get down to first base and get that single. So Matt Welk will run for Reem, who as the catcher, obviously they can use a courtesy runner and do. And so Desolich will be the batter now. He had a single in the first inning. A little blooper that dropped in. That was after Reem's grand slam, but then he was stranded. Well, Reem, I think, making an early bid for the player of the game. If, if there was uh, you know, such a thing, obviously their pitchers pitch well too, but the grand slam followed by a hard line single isn't a bad start for Reem. Yeah, two for two is a good start to the night. You're only in the top of the third. Yeah. 
off the end of the bat foul. And yeah, you made the point earlier. I wonder if there's if, if they're on a timer. I'm surprised they haven't put the lights on yet here. It's I wouldn't say it's dark or anything like that, but yeah, and these cameras that these cameras that CCX have, it doesn't really show you how dark it is. It's hard to tell on TV because they can open up the lens and the iris, but uh, it's getting kind of dark here, and you want to make sure you're being aware of player safety. Nordine with a nice pick on that ball. Throw to first and kind of had him leaning a little bit there. <laughs> It was, it was that a place in dirt, right? They have a natural grass and dirt. Yeah, so it's, it's different to, to get back to that first base. If you don't practice sliding head first on the turf, it's tough. And throw over there again. I always feel like that puts a little pressure on you, too. When you're used as a pinch runner or courtesy runner, <laughs> you don't want to get picked off because it's like that's what your one specialty is to be out there. <laughs> That yeah, and over for a strike. There's the expectation that you're coming as a courtesy runner, and there's strategic approaches by coaches that they keep fast runners uh, and smart runners on the bench to replace your catcher or pitcher. Uh, but you definitely don't want to put yourself in a position where you get picked off. And a foul tip. Here's the throw down. In safely there. So they get the strikeout though for out number two. And Elias Leach will be the batter. Just got a piece of it, but good jump by the courtesy runner and easily gets down to second base. <laughs> well, kind of a late slide there and his foot he ended up awkward, and the sh shortstop Lindstrom was kind of trying to sell the umpire. Yeah. Like, hey, we got him. The umpire gave him a good laugh. Kids are yeah, having fun. He was hoping that the uh, that Welk was going to, you know, kind of briefly pull his foot off the base because he slid in a little bit awkwardly there. Leach popped to third. In that first inning, so 0 for 1 has an RBI opportunity here. Runner at second, two out. Winters coming sidearm, nearly hit him with that one. I was saying earlier, that's exactly what you want to do with those inside pitches. You want to turn that shoulder, and if it hits, it hits you, it hits you in the back. It hits you in the muscle. Not going to hurt too hard, but you definitely don't want to open up. But otherwise, you just take it as a ball. I'd be curious to see your uh, CCX analytics department and the stats co to compare pass balls and wild pitches on a turf field versus a dirt field because we haven't seen one yet. We've seen a lot of balls down on the turf, but the way the ball bounces off that turf is so natural for these catchers, and it's so much, I don't want to say easier, but it's more predictable. Yeah, and infielders, I think, would yeah. say the same, too. You, that, you, you know, you just know your know the kind of bounce you're going to get. Yeah, it might be a little bit, you know, springier, so in some ways it's not always good, but... At least you have a better idea what to expect. Nice breaking ball there by Winters. Yeah, as long as it's going straight, as long as it doesn't change direction. If it goes up and down, that's fine because your body's still in that same position. But when it goes left and right, hits a chunk of dirt or some uneven dirt, that's where it uh, starts to go left and right. Particularly in you know, the batter's box area, too, where they've been stepping all over. Mm -hmm. Pitches up high, and Leach works out a walk. And par for the course. Hopkins has somebody warming up down there in the bullpen. It looks like we're going to have the pitch and change. Hansen getting set to bat for the Trojans. Maybe just a conversation. Didn't call him out yet. No, there it looks go. like he is going to lift him. Yeah. yeah, we do have another pitching change for the Royals. It would appear as Winters... Handing the ball over. Well, okay, now he's being sent <laughs> to the dugout. So we will take a timeout. Another pitching change for Hopkins here. Wyzetta leading at 4 nothing in the top of the third.
CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Carl Sheeby coming on in relief here for Hopkins. And as I mentioned, that they have used relievers as some of their main pitchers, and Sheeby has worked out. Uh, one of their most uh, innings at 20 innings so far. Two and two record, 4.9 ERA, 22 hits allowed. He's walked 13 and fanned 21. So coming on here in the third with two on and two out as James Hansen will step in to face Shebe. Hansen flied to left his first time through. Looks at a ball outside. You know, if you're Hopkins here, you, you're you already on your fourth pitcher here in the third inning. It's, it's interesting because as, as these as these weeks kind of wear on, you, you deal with pitch counts, but they must have eight, nine, ten pitchers on this roster that coach is looking to try and get out there and throw strikes. And it does, you know, kind of make it a little bit tougher on a hitter when you're seeing somebody new every time, too. But then again, on the, on the flip side of that is if they're not all kind of on on that particular day, it can be tough, too. I mean, I don't think probably in an ideal world they'd be making this many switches, but... Hansen fouls that one away. Ball up and now a 3 2 count here. Interesting. Nobody, if you get a big lead if you're in the second and first base, just get a big, big lead. Nobody's holding you on. Driven foul out of play there by Hansen. These little things like that, that if you get a big lead, it makes it more difficult for that third baseman shortstop. They're not going to have that opportunity to get that out at third or second. They got to make that long throw over first base. So Little things like that that you want to see your base runners take advantage of. First baseman's playing back, shortstop, second baseman playing deep in the hole. So you definitely want to get a big lead here with 3-2, two, two out. And that one over the inside corner for a called third strike. And Hansen is caught looking as Shebe gets out of the inning. For YZ in the third, no runs, one hit, a couple left on. We go to the bottom of three. It's still 4 nothing Trojans. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org.
Welcome back here to Hopkins. Noah Goldman leading off the bottom of the third for the Royals, and he fouls the first pitch away. Goldman, the number nine hitter, so his first time to the dish here. We got a 9-1-2 spots coming up for Hopkins. Boys, that has had a couple opportunities to kind of really blow this one open, but Hopkins is hanging around, down four zip, but you know, you get a couple runners on, chip away, get a run here, get a run there, and uh, sooner or later you have a chance to take that lead. Yeah, as we mentioned in that first inning, there's a called third strike by Filer. Has been impressive here today. Third straight batteries fanned and fifth overall in two, uh, two and a third. So Lincoln Heath will be the batter here for Hopkins. Yeah, we would have kind of projected maybe that they were going to really light up the scoreboard after that first inning, but Royals have done a good job, and, and they're kind of looking at their results as the season has gone on. They've Even when they haven't won, they've been certainly in games lately, too. You, know, you kind of showed that they've made some progress. There's another strike to Heath. He drew a walk in the first. Fastball missing away there. Ooh, nice breaking ball there. Good take though by Heath. I mean, he was fooled. There's no doubt about that, but able to lay off it and it was just out of the zone. It's one of those uh, you still say a great pitch though. <laughs> Came back fastball and just fought that one off. Ooh, close one there. Well, he had a little bit movement from the umpire there. He's about to ring him up, but he ended up with a 3-2 count here. Hits that one hard, but fouled on the left field line. See the thing about these bats is you can hear it from the defensive perspective. You can hear it when it's hit solid on the sweet spot. It just sounds different. It sounds almost like a wood bat. That one fouled straight back by Heath. So a good battle here. And another. Comes back, breaking ball, and caught him looking. Filer continues to show his arsenal here. Gets uh, his fourth strikeout in a row, and Dylan Lindstrom will be the batter. So difficult to adjust from a fastball that's moving that fast. I mean, I'm, th I'm thinking he's mid, mid-80s, and then he comes with a breaking ball that's over the plate like that. So hard to pick that up and adjust it and having the confidence to throw a breaking ball like that on a 3-2 count. Um, pretty impressive. Coach Mikalakis out discussing something with the umpire, not entirely sure what. So Lindstrom <laughs> stepping in, he took a called third strike his first time up. I wonder if there maybe were thinking that Filer was quick pitching them a little bit. Yeah, he has been in a groove. Um, when he's throwing strikes, he's getting that ball and throwing right away. He's ready to throw before that batter's even looking up to pick up the, the windup. Outside with that one. <coughs> the other thing I see him doing a lot is going to the mouth in between pitches. And you, can, you can do that when you step off the rubber. But yeah, I think you see here the umpire slowing down the pace here. And I think that's what Hopkins was coming out to talk about. This one is hit well out to left field. Will it carry enough? No. Hangs up 
And the catch made, boy, Lindstrom gave that one a pretty good ride and made it interesting, but it'll be a long out. No runs, no hits, no one left for the Royals. We go to the fourth. It's still 4 nothing. YZ Nine one two hitters coming for Wyzetta in the fourth as Kieran Leatherman leads it off against Shebe, the fourth pitcher of the game for Hopkins. So long fly ball out by Dylan Lindstrom. Hopkins thought they maybe were gonna get a solo home run to third. It's a fair ball, long throw across. Not in time, infield hit for Leatherman. Put that one in a good spot. Not much else uh, you know, that Mauser could do there. Just got over to it, strong throw, but not in time. Yeah, that right down the line, not too hard, but hard enough to get it to third baseman and a couple bounces and you almost have no chance. So Berkland will be the hitter now for Wyzetta and he has walked both of his plate appearances. Shebe starts him with a breaking ball for a strike. Runner is going. The throw down is off target and in safely is Leatherman. And got away from Nordine a little bit up. Yeah, good, good quick jump. Didn't hear any contact out that bat, so he knew he had to get down to second base and was in there pretty easily. Kirkland lays off that one up high and out of the strike zone. Yeah, these are the kind of bats you want from your leadoff hitter. You want to take bad pitches. When you get a good pitch, you want to hit it hard, but you want to do whatever you can to get on base. Set that table. He'd be varying his pace there, and it's inside. And Berkland been on via the walk every time up, three times in a row. And Gullickson will step in for the Trojans. Yeah, big spot here for Wyzetta to have a chance to really break this one open. Two runners on with nobody out in the heart of the order coming up to the plate. Yeah, I'm sure they're kind of not satisfied with mm -hmm. those four early runs. They, they're probably thinking this it's time to you know keep our foot on the gas and go for more here. That one's in the dirt. Lead runner is going to move up. Great jump by Leatherman. As soon as that one hit the, well, not dirt, but fake dirt. Uh, Nordine with a good block, but he easily makes third. The trail runner, Berkland, stayed at first, though. Yeah, that's the thing. When you're at second base, you can get a really, really big lead because it's very rare that they're going to be able to throw the ball down there. And if they do, you want to be able to get a big enough lead that you can actually go to third base before they throw the ball down to second base. So... Good break there, and now you see the first base runner breaking down to second base. And that covering. throw, nobody covering, and it'll go into center field and run scores. Leatherman in on that one as Hopkins defensively not on the same page as that throw sailing into center field. In a way, I'm surprised they would throw through anyway, but you see there is nobody anywhere near. Yeah, I think there was somebody who missed a signal, whether it was the catcher or the middle infielders. Either got to be covering the bag or the catcher's got to know to kind of put that one in his back pocket. 
Strike there to Gullickson. So now 5 nothing YZ and with Berkland now into scoring position as well here. And still nobody out here in the fourth. Trojans' eyes lighting up. And trying to put some more runs up. Ooh, and that one is way high and outside, and Berkland will get to third. Good aggressive base running. You don't want to be too crazy. You got nobody out. If you get to third base and nobody out, the odds of you scoring are pretty high. So you don't want to run yourself into a first out here. Make sure you give your, chance, your team a chance to bring you in. Yeah, he, he ran hard enough to make sure the pitcher covered the plate. If he didn't, yep. then you're thinking strongly about going because it's a long way to the backstop here. The catcher has to make a long throw. Oh, that one's way inside, and it's going to be in a run. Back-to-back -back wild pitches and Berkland strolling into the plate for run number six. She had come in and thrown pretty well, but uh, yeah, they got Looks little, some kind of tradition <laughs> going <laughs> like there it. with the hand of the football on the way in. Uh, but I was going to say, she had looked fairly good since coming in, but boy, the last couple have been nowhere near. Yeah, they just look like they're kind of melting down. You want to make sure you don't lose control of this game, but... You know, a couple pitches like that and throwing on a second base and never, no, nobody covering the, the base and then a pass ball, a wild pitch. It's uh, kind of unraveling here for Hopkins. Going that was the inside. previous one that was way inside. Yeah. Tough play for the catcher there, especially when the pitcher's throwing a fastball. Guard Swenson now the batter, and that one glancing off Nordine and will advance the runner. Now that one I think is going to be a pass ball. It seemed to hit his mitt. And then the shin guard. I think it actually hit the umpire shin guard. Oh, was it? Okay. Swenson's flied to center and flied to left. Gullickson in at second. And what we said earlier about it, wonder why the lights aren't on, is even it's more so darker, now. Yeah. It's darker <laughs> than when it didn't go. And hit in the air again. This time it'll be Mauser, the third baseman, in fair territory, makes the catch. So they finally get the first out. And Brady Lash will be the batter now for the Trojans. I think we'll be okay with the rain for a little bit here, but it's, it seems to be building further out west, but moving north. It's not moving our way. It's just moving kind of the north on the west side of town here, but it's definitely getting darker. And Lash stinging this one well. And that one is going to be into the gap. Lash digging around second and will head for third. The run scores, but he might be out at home. Oh, no, he's going to be just in safely. Avoided the tag. The little sleight of hander at third. <laughs> so another run scores. That part we kind of knew, but whether Lash was going to be in there at third or not was a, a question mark, but he'll make it. Yeah, he hesitated around second base. I don't know why. Great effort here by the right side of the outfield. I think it just goes off the glove of your right fielder, yeah. Good, nice job not to collide with each other. Nice job to get the ball in. Uh, base runner hesitates around second there. Almost get him out at third because of that hesitation. Oh, wow. Mm, just got slide. in. Play the weak candidate right there. If his hand, if he uh, kept that other hand forward, he probably was going to be out. That's a, that's a pretty good base run. Good slide. So here's Reem, who all he did was hit a grand slam his first at bat and then smoke a single up the middle the second time around. Fouling this one back. Still just run one out and a runner at third, Lash. And that one will get away and Lash is gonna score. Again, the first few innings, we just hadn't seen that from Hopkins, but now a three wild pitches and a pass ball in the same inning, and, and then not to mention that throw down to second that was to an uncovered base, so. Yeah, like we were saying earlier, those, those pass balls, wild pitches are 
Um, not very common on this turf, but when you're not thrown over the plate, it's hard for a catcher to kind of like that play right there. It's easy for him to get down and block the ball. When it's not over the plate or near the plate, it's really difficult for the catcher to kind of extend and get out there, especially when pitchers are throwing the ball this hard. Yeah, really most of those were no chance type balls as it was way outside or way inside. Yeah. Welk will run for Ream again as a courtesy runner. Desilich will bat. Keep in mind, particularly on a night where there's the chance of rain, that you know, the 10 run rule is something that Hopkins and Wyzetta have to be conscious of here. Trojans would like to keep scoring. You know, you don't you don't take your foot off the gas until you you know, get that lead big enough that you can chop off a couple innings off this one, you know, save your pitching staff a little or whatever. Yeah, the kids don't really care that much, but the coaches for sure definitely wanna have, don't want to have to deal with the scheduling conflict of, oh, we had a rain out and we're in the top of the bottom of the bottom of the third or the top of the fourth and we didn't finish the game. It's, um, you kind of want to put yourself in a position to wrap it up if the weather does move in. Breaking ball missing inside. That one is over for a strike. More activity in the Hopkins pen, so they, <laughs> we wouldn't be at, at, at really any point surprised to see a pitching change the way they've rotated through him so far. Ooh, and that one hits him. Esletch aboard via the hit by pitch. It's gonna leave Mark right in the calf. And now we are going to see a pitching change for the Royals. Actually got him on the back leg, it looked like, as he tried to skip out of the way of that one. And so another pitching change for the Royals. They trail it now 8 to nothing here in the top of the fourth. We'll be back with more baseball on CCX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Welcome back after getting hit in the leg. Adam Desilich a little bit sore there for Wyzetta. <laughs> Eight nothing Trojans lead. They've scored four here in the fourth after they had a four run first. And Olin Lisney coming in in relief for Hopkins here. He has worked 12 innings so far. Has allowed 15 hits, well, walked 11, struck out 11. Seven is his ERA, an 0 and 1 record. And now the lights do come on. The batter is Elias Leach, who had a pop out on a walk. Two runners aboard for Wyzetta, still just one out. First pitch over for strike. Been kind of a mixed bag for Hopkins pitching. I mean, at times they've looked pretty effective and, yeah, and short not so stretches. much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> short, short stretches of strikes, but then most recently kind of falling apart. And I lost that one as it's high and inside. Which isn't surprising. If you don't really have a go-to starter or two, it's really hard to develop that habit of being able to throw strikes consistently if you don't have the reps um, and you're not throwing more than an inning or two at a time. And that one glancing off Nordine's glove and the runners will move up. Had to go past ball again on that one as 
It wasn't a great pitch, but it was certainly catchable. Yeah, it was on his glove hand side, and it just went off the, the webbing, and thought he would have a chance to get that one in front of him, but scoots off the glove and back at the backstop. Ordin, I thought it played really well early. It's just kind of looking a little discouraged maybe here, though he's had to chase it around a lot of pitches this inning. High chopper up the middle. They'll get the out at first. Another run scores. As the lead runner Welk coming in on the chopper by Leach. So two gone, now nine nothing. And Hansen will be the batter. About as perfect of his ground ball as you can get as a shortstop. Nice easy cherry hop right to your chest. Skip and throw to first. Yeah, and he, it was even kind of in the direction of leading him toward first for that throw as well. Hanson 0 for 2. Still an important runner at third, obviously, because mm -hmm. we're sitting at 9-0 rather than 10. They would like to get that runner home. Yeah, definitely want to get that 10th run across the plate. Up the middle. Nice play by Lindstrom, and he'll throw him out. Solid job on back-to-back -back plays there by Lindstrom, but it's a big inning for YZ as they push five across to lead it 9 nothing as we go to the bottom of four here on CCX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Hopkins will have the heart of their order coming up. Three, four, five hitters as they try and battle back a little bit from this 9 nothing deficit against undefeated YZ. Wyatt Peterson stepping in to lead things off for the Royals. He is 0 for 1, struck out against Filer his first time up, and he is not alone in that as Filer has struck out two in each inning so far, so six strikeouts total. Have you tried that ropes course back there, Wilcox? Uh, no. Come on. Sounds like something you should do one of these days. <laughs> Time called, and the umpire going to come out. And th remember, this was a little bit of an issue earlier that they were talking about. Oh, you, you could sure do that, Wilcox. I've seen how you drive cars. You could get up there and run around that thing, huh? You probably don't need No, we got to put a harness on you. You're too crazy. You'd do that, wouldn't you? <laughs> He's shaking his head, but he would. He's shaking his head no. So here the umpire is, as we were talking about last inning, um, coach was, Mikulakis was trying to let him know that he's quick pitching our kids. He's staying in a groove. Um, he's staying in a groove, and as that's what you want to do as a pitcher. You want to get that ball and keep throwing strikes, especially when you're up. Um, you want to keep the game moving, get your team back in the dugout, and get to the plate. But he was uh, quick pitching there, and the umpire went out there and talked to him. So it's a subtle thing, but the umpire wants him to make sure that you wait until I give you a, you know, just a little quick point or nod that that we're ready for the pitch. Yeah, because he's he's waiting for the the batter to get in position, and you see he clearly points the the pitcher. Uh, you're in charge now. And if you're Hopkins, you're glad that the umpire is saying that. You know, he's the one who's going to signal it, not that you're waiting for the batter to have to call time. Or the coach 
trying to bark at the umpire or his teammates or his players to say, hey, step out of the box. Because, you know, in between pitches, players have a habit. Um, they want to step out, get composure, uh, find their position in the box, and before you know it, that pitcher's in the windup. Ooh, that one just a bit high. <laughs> and let's face it, too, it's a little bit of let's try and break the pitcher's rhythm a little bit, too. Yeah, definitely gazemanship, trying to disrupt his momentum. Fastball fouled away. But in this particular case, I think I do agree with Hopkins that he was quick pitching at least a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I agree. Just got a piece of that breaking ball. Peterson's made him work. If nothing else on this at bat, that's for sure. Missed on that breaking ball as the Wyzetta fans groans. Yeah, it was a good take. It was a little bit off the plate, but good breaking ball. Stayed around close to the plate, but wasn't able to keep it close enough. Oop, that fastball up high and away, and he lost him. So Peterson will draw a leadoff walk here in the fourth. Second walk given today by Filer, and Swatsky will step up. He had a single. Only hit that the Royals have had so far. Dismissed <laughs> with that one, one and all. Oh. That one is over for a strike. Foul down the right field side here. Couldn't get him to chase that one. short. This could be two. They get one and two. Taylor made double play. Suwatsky probably kind of wishing he hadn't hit it quite so so well, so hard as they turn two. Nicely done. The middle infielders there. Berkland starting this one up. Yeah, one of the hardest hit balls so far for Hopkins. Just unfortunately on the ground right at the second, or the shortstop who's uh, able to get it over to the second baseman and turn that 6-4-3 double play. And you talked, too, about those true hops off this turf. That one made that one, I don't want to say an easy play, but yeah, uh, you, relatively routine. You really don't have to move in or out. You kind of just wait there and adjust based on where that hop is going to be because you know what the next hop is going to be, and you position yourself to make that throw instead of trying to track it down. Mauser hit the ball very solidly in his first at bat, but it was right at the second baseman, a line out to end the bottom of the first. Ooh, nice breaking ball there. Filer's going to have his first inning that he doesn't have two strikeouts. He'd still like to get one, though, with this 1-2 count. Wouldn't chase that one. Two and two. And outside with that. That's the one downfall of when your team has that long inning like they had in the top of the fourth. That meant uh, your pitcher is sitting around for a while. He seems to be maybe not in quite the groove that he was. And that one will be a called third strike though. Mauser down on strikes. The Royals are done in the fourth. No runs 
No hits, and courtesy of that double play, no one left on. We've completed four. It is 9-0, Wyzetta. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. We head to the fifth. Kieran Leatherman will lead things off for Wyzetta. The 9-1-2 hitters coming up in the fifth as they did in the fourth. And he drives this one to right field, but it's going to hang up and be catchable and caught there by Lincoln Heath. So one gone in the fifth. And Berkland will be the hitter now for Wyzetta. He has been on all three times, all three times via the walk. Nolan Lisney back on the mound to begin this inning. He is the fifth pitcher of the game for Hopkins. Again, somewhat by design. It sounded like that's kind of been their MO this year, that they're using guys in short stretches and not having like a starter mentality of going deep in games. That one is over for a strike. Yeah, we were saying how Hopkins' tendency is to start somebody in Kind of give him a short leash, but you know you're gonna have a really short leash against a team like Wazetta, who's having such a great season and such a deep lineup. It's hard to get in a groove and get a string of four, five, six, seven, eight uh, outs in a row because you get such a strong lineup. Brooklyn, I'll give him some credit. He's still willing to take pitches. I mean, you probably think it. Oh, he's already walked three times. He really wants to swing the bat, but. He is unselfishly getting aboard for his teammates here as he's walked four times in a row now. And Tyler Gullickson will be the hitter. Yeah, it's good habits. You don't, you don't want to break out of your habits. Um, you want to do what you can, especially, you know, with nine runs on the board here, we're getting later in the game, um, little things like that. If you get that 10th run across, you're able to save other pitchers because I'm assuming Wyzetta has a pretty busy schedule coming up. So if you can get that 10-run ton, ton rule, you save pitchers for your starting pitcher and then you don't have to bring another pitcher in. That one is a strike. Gullickson a single, a fly out and a walk. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. I mean, you might think nine nothing, you don't look to steal a base, but that may not be true here. Yeah, especially with the leadoff runner down there at first base. Pounded back up the middle, it's off Lisney's body and he's not gonna have a play. That'll be a base hit for Gullickson as Lisney taking that one off, I, guess, I think it was his, let's see if it's his leg or hip. Yeah, kind of hit his glove a little bit, but you got to call that a base hit. That's, yeah. that's not an easy play to make when you're just spinning away from pitching there. So Swenson will be the batter here for the Trojans, first and second one out. Laid off that one. He's kind of due 0 for 3 here. Is, uh, hit the ball in the air every time. Couple of flyouts and then a pop out to third. Interesting. First time I think tonight we haven't seen somebody warming up down there on the left field line for Hopkins. So we can stick with this pitcher for a few batters here and see what happens. 
One, one and one count now to Swenson. And that's a fair ball right past first, and it should score a pair. Swenson's going to dig and go for three. And he will be in with a two-run triple for the Trojans. Well, I said he was due, and he was thinking the same thing. Yeah, hard hit ball, got an inside pitch, pulled it right down the line. The right fielder was kind of playing off the line. Easy triple. Uh, Hustling out of the box here. You see, pull him down the line. Hard hit ball down the first baseline, just past the first baseman. You see the right fielder over there. Really didn't have a chance to get him out there. Good strong throw, good relay to make it close, but hustling out of the box puts him in a position to get a triple there. Brady Lash is the batter now for Wyzetta as they've gone up 11 to nothing. And you never know what Hopkins might do in the bottom of the inning, so you're still thinking. More than 10 would be good. They got 11 and would like to make it 12. Lash hit a triple last time, which was aided by his excellent slide where he, <laughs> he pulled his lead hand out of there and snuck the other one in, or he might have been out. Very interesting <laughs> setup here. There's a strike. You see him putting his toes almost on the inside part of the batter's box, and the catcher sets up on the inside corner. It's almost like he's got his glove over his knees. Doing it again. Hard hit ball up the middle. That'll be through for a hit, and it scores another run. As Lash delivering the base hit. His second straight hit and RBI. And it'll bring Ream to the dish. Yeah, that ball was kind of breaking out over the plate, kind of had a little tail. Um, he was able to hit that right up the middle there. Good solid contact. Ream hit a grand slam on the first pitch he saw in the first inning. And then a sharp single in the third. Also walked last time around. Looks like Hopkins is just going to ride this one out. Down 12 zip here in the fifth inning. Still nobody warming up down in the bullpen. They're, you know, in their, what, fifth, sixth pitcher. It's kind of sometimes you just run out of arms. Uh, Lisney, I mean, he's been hit fairly hard, but at least he hasn't been walking everybody. Yeah. I mean, it, that part of it has been a little bit better that he's at least given him a chance by putting in play well, and he hits Reeb. <laughs> <laughs> So Ream aboard on the hit by pitch. They'll run for him again, I'm sure. And we might have spoken too soon about no more pitching changes. We'll see. There wasn't anybody warming up, but that doesn't mean he couldn't bring a position player in. Yeah, I was listening to the radio today, and sometimes you, you hear him talking, and, you know, sometimes on any given night, sometimes teams are just better than the other team, and... Um, Why is that a, you know, coming in here undefeated, number one team in the state? Hopkins knew what they, what they were going to face, but Why is that a definitely didn't let down, and they're not going to stop here. They're going to keep putting up runs as much as they can. So this does look like a, just a discussion. They are going to stick with Lisney here, and, and there's a possibility that coach is just explaining what I was uh, we were just talking about like you know we kind of need you to just get through this one way or the other it's not going perfectly well right now but there's Kyle Boutwell stepping into that for Wyzetta Kyle 0 for 9 as a hitter this year but would love to change that here in this spot High and away with that one. First and second, still just one out. Trojans leading it now 12 nothing. They've scored three in this inning. That one inside. Be a, maybe a little bit interesting to see if Wyzetta might 
think about going to the bullpen for the bottom of the fifth, you know, to not use another inning out of your starter, but then at the same time, maybe you just want to finish things off if he hasn't really gotten the pitch count up too much. Two one pitch, knocked down to second, and that one's juggled. Not going to get a play at first, and they'll be loaded up. So an error there. Second baseman Lerner, he was thinking two, and instead gets zero. Yeah, he was trying to rush things there, trying to get that second out before we get the first out. Going to throw that ball over to second baseman, but unable to uh, field it cleanly and. Both, uh, all three runners are safe, so now is that a really big chance to put up a big, big number here in the fifth inning? Going to have another pinch hitter as Bit Win will hit. Getting what appears to be his first at bat of the season. Takes that one for a strike. Bench is very excited for him, trying to rile him up, get him excited, and go up there attack. You know, he's the guy that they were mentioning in their prior to the year as a returner that had played a lot. So I think, and I uh, don't know this for sure, but I wonder if you might have had injury issue because just batting first time here. That one is over for a strike. in the dirt and it actually hit the umpire's foot I think it saved Nordine. Yeah a little spinner there and it uh, kind of caught the car catcher off guard and went off the uh, umpire's shin. Two two pitch and a swing and a miss and win down on strikes so Lisney wins that battle. Get out number two. And another pinch hitter coming up here as Grady Haig will bat. Swung through that pitch, kind of low and away. A good out, out pitch there to get that strikeout off the plate. Got him chasing. So a good opportunity here for Wyzetta to get these guys into the game. They still did push it beyond the 10 runs, so they didn't, you know, they didn't have to make that choice. And that's the thing, you know, even when you've got a big lead, you can't ever ask any player to go up there and just make it out. So those guys getting on earlier, and that's not like, oh, they're running it up on us or sportsmanship or any of that. You, you, everybody still wants to hit when they get up there. Yeah, and that goes bo for both sides. Hopkins would not want to see them just conceding and giving up an out. It's just not good sportsmanship, so you still got to play the game. Pitch over for a strike. Lesney trying to get out of this one and at least give his team an opportunity to, you know, get a couple and keep the game alive, but, or they need three at least. And to short, Lindstrom up with it, will flip to second, and they get the out there. But Wyzetta does push that lead beyond 10 runs as they score three in the inning. It's 12 nothing Trojans heading to the bottom of the fifth. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku.
Welcome back. Good look at the fans here watching this one. I think that's the Wyzetta side, and there's some Hopkins younger players there enjoying a little snack, and the rain has held off to this point for the most part. We had a little light rain earlier, but Wyzetta leading at 12 to nothing as Lerner will step in to lead off the bottom of the fifth, and Filer is still on the hill for Wyzetta. Lerner has flied to right field is only previous at bat. Here's a little tapper in front of the plate. Pitcher Filer will throw him out. Kind of lobbed that one and Lash had to reach around the runner a little bit, but he'll get the out for out number one. Yeah, good footwork there by the first baseman. Uh, didn't want to get create a collision at first base, but was able to reach around and get that ball and keep his foot on the base. Elijah Stewart is the hitter. Yeah, that's one where if you're Filer, you'd kind of like to put that one in a little better spot for your first baseman, but they do get the out. Stewart, seems like a long time ago now, started the game on the mound and only got through a, what, three or four batters before they lifted him. He struck out his first time up as a hitter. Fouling this one away. Why is that a last home game of the regular season on Friday as they'll host Eden Prairie and then they've still got Chanhassen, Blaine, and STMA on the road. Foul that one away and uh, as we mentioned for Hopkins, they're playing Rogers at Target Field on Thursday and then they host St. Michael Albertville here Friday and then wrap up the regular season the next week. Yeah, it'll be a fun day for Hopkins tomorrow. Playing down in Target Field is always great, and Yankees in town following the big boys playing a 12-10 game and take the diamond after that. That'll be a great day. John Jacobson of CCX out enjoying the Twins-Yankees tonight. <laughs> and that'll be a called third strike for out number two. He tried to pretend he was disappointed he wouldn't be able to watch this one <laughs> live, but I said, no, nah, I think probably keep your attention on the Twins-Yankees. Not terrible, but they're down three zip. Nordine will step in here for Hopkins and fouls that first pitch straight back. He knew Filer would like to kind of close this with a sharp inning. He, Last inning was, you know, not his best, but he still only ended up facing three after getting a double play ball. But Yeah, pretty clean game. He's probably around 70 pitches, several strikeouts, probably eight strikeouts, nine strikeouts now. Um, maybe a walk or two. Yeah, He's been throwing really, really good command of the strike zone. Nice breaking ball there, but Nordin laying off it. Yeah, one, one infield hit, a couple of walks, and then... Those eight strikeouts. If you're able to throw your fastball and locate it mid 80s and come over with a breaking ball like he's shown tonight, it's uh, very difficult to hit that type of pitcher. Yeah, and he's just one of a few that are kind of at that level for them too. That's the, the scary thing for their opponents. Yeah, very deep team, impressive so far. I've seen from what I've seen from them. And there's a called third strike to end it for the Trojans as they get a one, two, three, fifth inning out of Filer, and they will wrap this one up early as a 12 to nothing win in five innings. My first time seeing them in person this year, and uh, they're as good as advertised. You can see why they're now 16 and 0, Drew. Yeah, solid in the field. Um, key, key at bats, hits in the right spot. A couple triples, a home run, grand slam, great pitching. And as you said, if you have three, four pitchers that can throw like that or even close to that, you're in a really good spot. And when you can hit the ball and get on base, it's going to be a really tough, tough out for anybody facing this Trojan team this, this spring. That is for sure. Well, we hope you enjoyed this one, and best of luck to both these teams down the stretch of the regular season and then into section play as well. Wyzetta now 16-0 as they win this one over Hopkins, 12-0 in five innings. For Drew Keo and all of our crew, MJ Wilcox, good night from Hopkins High School.